Okay, this video is for chapter two, trig, just a few little hints. You're gonna have several questions that ask you for amplitude and period. Remember the amplitude is the coefficient of your trig function, so this amplitude is one half. And remember, to find the period, you take this angle of three x and you set it equal to two pi, and then you solve for x. So this is going to be 2 pi over 3 for the period. The next one has an amplitude of 5. And the period, it's 1 half x equals 2 pi. I'm going to solve for x, and we're going to multiply by 2 on both sides. So x equals 4 pi, so that is my period. Number 3, the amplitude is 2 from right there. The period, we're going to take this 2 pi x, set it equal to 2 pi, solve for x, x is 1. The phase shift is where you take 2 pi x minus 5 and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so it's going to be 2 pi x equals 5, divide by 2 pi, it's 5 over 2 pi for a phase shift. This one has an amplitude of 2. Pi x equals 2 pi to find the period, divide by pi, x equals 2. Okay, so that's period and phase shift. Make you some notes so that when you get ready to take that test, you've got that handy. Those are not difficult. Make sure you get those easy ones. Um, this is an exact value chart. It goes right along with your unit circle. It's some reference angles. I want you to notice that it starts out with 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90, and sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, as I start across here, I've got the square root of 0 over 2, the square root of 1 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 3 over 2, the square root of 4 over 2. And then I turn right around and do it backwards for cosine. And then for tangent, I take those two pieces and I form my fraction for tangent. And then I did some simplifying. You can stop the video and look at the simplifying that I did um, to, to get each of these answers. And don't forget that if you divide by zero, you are undefined. You may want to take a picture of this, uh, recreate this on your unit circle if it's not already there, but this is a helpful chart. Um, when it's asking you for exact values, I encourage you to use the unit circle. If they're asking you for calculator, then I want to tell you to put your calculator in radian mode, which this one is in, radian mode, you see it right there, and then when you have sine inverse, they're telling you the sine, they're wanting the angles, what they're wanting, so it's second sine, let me move this so you can see the buttons that I press, second sine, and it gives you sine inverse, and then you just put point eight, and my answer there is point 93, I think it said round to two places. And then the next one says the cosine of square root of 5. Notice I bumped over so that my division sign would not be under my radical. And when you round that one, it's 1.19. So use the calculator to help you on those. Okay, they ask you to fill out the rest of the or find the missing parts of the triangle. So this is 58.4, this is 90. So obviously I can subtract to find the other angle. 180 minus 90 minus 58.4, it's gonna give me 31.6. So the measure of angle B is 31.6. Now I'm not gonna write it on my picture because I don't wanna use that measure to find my other parts. Because I, if I've messed up, I don't want to compound my error. So I'm going to put smiley face over here at A, and if you're standing here, this is your opposite, and this is your adjacent, this is your hypotenuse. And if I'm interested in A, I'll notice it's the opposite. I happen to know that C is 53, so I know the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the sine, because sine deals with opposite and hypotenuse. So the sine of 58.4 equals A over 53. It equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to go to 
my calculator. I'm going to go in and change this to degree mode as I switch to degrees. And then I'm just going to put my problem in here, sine of 58.4. And I know that to get rid of that 53 over here, I should multiply both sides by 53. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply that answer by 53. And A is 45.14 if you're rounding it to the nearest hundredth. If you're rounding it to the nearest tenth, it's 45.1. We'll do a very similar process here. Cosine of 58.4 is 0.5239. I'm going to multiply by 53 on both sides. These are going to cancel, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by 53. Let me go back and get that number. Oh, mess that up. Let's do it again. Cosine 58.4 times 53. So that gives me B as 27.77. So I have found A and B, the measure of angle B. We know C is 90 degrees, so we know all the parts to that triangle. Okay, if you're given a picture like this, where they're really interested in you finding X here, but that uh, triangle is not a right angle, but it's inside of maybe a bigger one, then what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find this whole section from here to here. Then I'm going to find question mark. If I can subtract those, I'll know what X is. So this whole section, this whole section down here, um, is inside this big triangle that has 400 on this side, a right angle, and an angle of 31. So if I put smiley face here, then this is my opposite, and the one I'm interested in here would be my adjacent. So that means I'm using the tangent. So the tangent of 31 equals 400 over the mystery of x plus question mark. Well, I know that I need to rearrange this equation, so I'm going to put that in parentheses, and I'm going to multiply both sides by that expression. And then I'll have and I'll divide by the tangent of 31. So, whatever they are together will equal, I'm going to make sure I'm in degree mode, I am, 400 divided by the tangent of 31. I get 665.71, okay, for the whole thing. Now I'm going to solve this little triangle, and I'm going to put smiley face right here at 61. So the tangent of 61 is this opposite over this little bitty adjacent. So I'm going to do the same process here. I'm going to multiply both sides by my variable question mark. Question mark times the tangent of 61 is 400. Divide by the tangent of 61. So question mark equals 400 divided by the tangent of 61, which is 221.7. So, all I got to do now is subtract those. So, I'm going to go get that number and subtract that number from it. So, that X that I'm looking for is 443.99. That is my answer. Okay. Um, I'll try to do another video to help y'all with the rest of chapter two. I wanted to also show y'all you could use your calculator to do some graphing. Uh, let me find one of those that I did. What did it say? Um, let's go. In. I think I just put it in there as a tangent. So I put in here in my y equals a an expression that they're asking me about, and it says negative tangent of x plus pi over two. So I put that in there, and then I'm going to hit graph. And at first, when I hit graph, it didn't look like this. It was um, nothing like this at all. But one of the features of this calculator is that I can hit zoom. Um, this is probably what it looked like at the beginning. But what I did was I hit zoom. It's starting to draw there. And I chose the trick 
screen. It's going to have the trig window. And then it'll print that graph on there for you. So if you're asked to select the proper graph, you can use your calculator to help you do that. If you have any questions in preparation for Chapter 2, don't hesitate to email me. Just uh, click Ask My Professor on that um, homework page as you're working. I hope you do very well. Thank you.